Okay, praise the Lord. <clears throat> Let's all stand up. And we're going to read the portion of the scripture together. It's the prayer of the Apostle Paul in Ephesians. He has two prayers, but this one is the prayer that we are going to study this morning. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I just don't know how to squeeze it into 30 minutes. <laughs> So, I decided to just focus on one particular part of the prayer. But let's all read it together. It's on the screen. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 19. Let's all read it loud with our Shakespearean voice. Okay, can we do that? Okay, Ephesians 1, 15 to 19. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints... Do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, what are the riches of His glory, of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power, toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power very good lord thank you that we can have a glimpse of powerful powerful insights concerning your spirit and how it affects us we commit this to you lord we pray that you open our minds and our hearts in jesus name amen could you give a high five to like you know 500 people around you you know just say hi hello <laughs> okay <clears throat> we are happy that you're here this morning we're so glad that you came to church and uh, i'd like open the introduction with uh, a quote from uh, what they call socrates was a wise person it was said he was wise not because of how he know the right answers but because he knows how to ask the right questions. And spirit of wisdom, spirit of revelation, it speaks of wisdom. And so most of the time, the best question to ask is why. In the Old Testament, we kept on having questions on why. God asked Canaan, why are you angry? God, the Lord asked Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Moses, was asked, Moses asked, why is the bush not burned up? Nathan asked David, why have you despised the word of the Lord? And Job asked, why did I not die at birth? I mean, those are questions we all ask, right? And if you really want to understand things, if you want to grow in the spirit of wisdom and, and revelation, many of us need to know the, the, to ask the right questions. In the New Testament, Jesus' favorite question is why. He asked, why are you anxious? He asked, why do you look at the speck of your brother's eye? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Why do you not believe me, and why have you forsaken me? The question why is a straightforward point, seeking wisdom and understanding. I remember when Stephen Paul was just a toddler. You know, I miss the Paul who is just a small kid like Nathan. <clears throat> and his favorite, favorite question to me is, why? And if I answer it, and then he answers it with, why? Why again, you know, and it never ends. When my mom died in, in January 1, 1991, I asked the same question, why? When many of us face tragedies in life, we ask the same question, why? Because these are the things that has to have an answer, especially if it's difficult, especially if it's a hard question. There's a story of a Christian nurse in America she was, she was attending to a very sick man around in his 60s in an intensive care. And although the man was in an intensive care, the nurse knew that she had, he had really no hope. And so this nurse sat with this man almost the whole night, you know, spent hours with him, praying for him in that bedside for his healing. The following morning, the nurse arrived back at the same room expecting to find an empty bed because they were expecting for that man to die that night 
But to her surprise, instead of an empty bed, she found her patient sitting up, eating breakfast, and looking remarkably healthy. And he says, praise the Lord, you're healed. And yep, he cheerfully replied, I feel great. It's you and your prayers. You healed me. And the nurse gave a reply full of wisdom. He says, no, I didn't heal you. God did. And now it's your responsibility to find out why. You know, miracles doesn't just happen. That's not an end in itself. There's a reason for it. <clears throat> God didn't save us so that we can have access to someone who can answer all our prayers. God is not a genie in the lamp. That every time we need, we rub the lamp and we can have an, our wish. There is a reason and a purpose for it. Mark Twain says, What are the two, two most important days in your life? The day you were born and then the day you find out why. The biggest, most powerful question you can ask is why. Mark 8, 36 says, For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeit his soul? You know, that's the very common statement. Let, but let me, let me fair appraise that in the 20, 21st century in the church. What would it profit a Christian if all his prayers were answered, a fine house, abundant income, blessings galore, but he missed the very reason for which he was created? What a waste would that be? Find out why. You see, we have a very volatile world now. It's a war in the Middle East, in a potential to expand Israel and its neighbors. We have the war in Europe. We have Ukraine and Russia and, you know, the threat to Poland and all of that. We are impending war in China and Taiwan and all of that. And we have this, you know, crazy politics in the Philippines <laughs> that has become like a telenovela, right? I asked the question, we all search for meaning. And what is the Christian life? What is the purpose right now here? You know, I, I almost thought that, you know, sometimes the Lord spoke to me. You know, Jerome, you treat me like a pharmacist. Every time you're sick, you come to me and ask for a prescription. Every time you need help, you go to the drugstore. And you're treating me like a drugstore. Or maybe you think my gift for you is in installment, five gives. Okay, I'll bless you in five gives. You know, you expect not this, the Lord. <clears throat> Heaven is not like that. Let me say this in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. If you believe me, you will understand. His divine power has granted to us... Can you read it? Everything. Come on, read it with loud voice. Everything pertaining to life and godliness, to the knowledge of Him who has called us by His own glory and excellence. It's in the past tense. God has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Everything means all things, sufficient to cover every issue of life. So what do we need? Why do we need more blessings? Why do we need more power, more resources? Peter said, it's already been given. So why do we need it more? Now Colossians 2 verse 9 and 10 re-emphasize that statement. He says, for in Him, Christ, all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. And in Him, you have made been made complete. Word complete means sufficient, perfectly supplied, qualified. Everything you need is absolutely accessible. Not because you don't have a degree, you're not complete. You're sufficient, authorized, qualified saints. Not just because you're single, you're not complete. Not, not just because you're not married, you're not complete. Bible says, you have been made complete. You know, and every Sunday we come to the Lord. and Lord, reveal it to me. Make me understand how great is your love. Romans 5 verse 5 says, This hope does not disappoint us. For God has poured out His love into our hearts by means of the Holy Spirit, who is God's gift to us. In the message version, it says, In alert expe expectancy such as this, we have never left feeling shortchanged. Quite the contrary, we can't round up enough containers 
to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. Wow. I said to myself, Lord, so what's the problem? If we have everything that you provided, if everything's been made complete, if everything that's needed for life and for godliness has been given to us past tense, so what is, why do we need it more seemingly today? Listen, everybody, here's the key. The whole message is in this phrase. We need a revelation of these blessings. Now, that, I, I put a lot of weight in that statement. We need a revelation in that message. Some of us have not come to the point of being revealed it to God, and so we don't understand. Oh, I cannot accept it. Oh, I don't think God's going to do it. I don't think God is. But we need a revelation. Revelation, insight, understanding to apply things. Our blessings, riches are so great, the human mind cannot comprehend it. Do you know that God's blessing for you and me is so amazing, the brain cannot comprehend it? Where do I say that? In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 12. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Can you imagine that statement? Nobody has ever imagined what God has prepared for you and me. But God has revealed it. Remember the word revelation? Has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him. Even, not, even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of who is from God, and we might know, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us. Apart from being revealed, we cannot understand. Apart from being revealed, we cannot claim. Apart that being revealed to us, we don't have a grasp of what God had given to us. You know, this excites me because basically there are two things. In my heart when I read this, God has prepared everything for us. To be successful in your business, in your career, to pursue the ministry you have, to be the best that you can be. I mean, you and I are not an accident. Amen? You know, sabihin sa katabi mo, you are not an accident. Right? Me, children are not accidents. People might make mistakes, but children are not accidents. God has planned for you he is planned for you and that's the first point in my heart the second thing that I, i'm excited about is the holy only the holy spirit knows the plans of god for you the spirit searches the deep deep things of god and has revealed it to us second corinthians if we need a revelation of what is given to us now some, some people might understand, sometimes when Paul writes a letter, he writes using legal terms. We have a couple of lawyers in the church. But let me read to you a certain portions that makes it like a legal term. Ephesians 1.7 In Him we have the redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Ephesians 1.11 In Him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will. Ephesians 1.13 In Him we are also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The term in Him is a legal term. Saying that you have access, legal access, to every single promise that God has made. And that's why I say we need a revelation. Now, that's the prayer of the Apostle Paul. If I summarize the prayer into one sentence, it's, Lord, give them a revelation so they understand. Let me read it again to you, the one that we wrote, uh, read earlier, Ephesians 1, 15 to 19. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in Lord Jesus Christ and of your love for all the saints, do not cease to give you thanks for prayers, making mention of you in prayers. Makes the, this is the main point of the prayer. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. 
in Him. In the knowledge of Him. See that legal term? That the eyes of your understanding may be opened. How are you going to open it? Only with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That you may know the hope of His calling, what is the riches of His glory and His inheritance in the saints, what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe according to the working of His mighty power. Now listen, background of this, the Apostle Paul planted the church in Ephesus. When he planted the church in Ephesus, you read it in Acts 19, the Apostle Paul performed extraordinary miracles. Those extraordinary miracles didn't happen in, others, in other cities, only happened in Ephesus. So Paul is saying here, there's so much great power. There's so much available for us. We need to see it. And the only way to see it, Lord, give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Amen? Now, I, I've, I've seen this, you know. I've spoken about this. The first time I preached this message, do you know? It's 1991. And it, the baby boomers never understood it. You know, I hope the millennials did. And I hope the Gen Z's would. But listen, I'm going to reveal to you what I believe is the truth in the Scripture. Listen, God's truth cannot be seen with our eyes, be heard with our ears, nor comprehend solely with our reason or intuition. They are revealed to those who love Him. Can't see it, can't hear it, can't feel it. They have to be revealed. God Himself has to be revealed. If you're saying, where is God? I don't, need, I don't know where God is. Well, you cannot find God unless He finds you. He has to reveal Himself to you. It's a revelation. Now, in Isaiah 11 verse 12, it expands the meaning of the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It says, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon Him, the branch which is Jesus, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Wow. That is really big. So, I'm so glad that uh, chaps leading worship listened to the Lord and sang the songs that he sang about the Holy Spirit. You know, point for you chaps. Very good. Really spoke to me. You see, let me define to you the Holy Spirit. Okay? Because that's the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It's the Holy Spirit. Let me define it to you. It's the third person of the triune God, the Holy Spirit, co-equal, co-eternal with the Father and the Son. You know, sometimes when you talk about the Spirit, capital T, capital S, the Spirit, in the Old and the New Testament, it refers to the way the Spirit of God moves, the character. And sometimes it refers to the emphasis of the power. But never in any time when it says the Spirit, it refers to a depersonalized force. It doesn't mean it's a force. It doesn't mean it's an energy. It doesn't mean it's, it's something that just moves that's totally without any personality. That's why it says wisdom and revelation. Wisdom is the fullness of God's knowledge used. Revelation is the impartation and manifestation of knowledge. Now listen to Romans 8.27. He who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Spirit. The Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Now, it says there that the, the Holy Spirit has a mind. Do you believe the Holy Spirit has a mind? If He's a person, He has a mind. Now, He has an emotion. He has thoughts. But here, the point is, the Holy Spirit has a mind. Amen? You understand that? Now, I ask myself, if the Holy Spirit has a mind, I wonder... What is the IQ of the Holy Spirit? Have you thought about that? Let me give you my answer. The Holy Spirit has no IQ. Yeah, why? Because His intelligence is unmeasurable. IQ is intelligence quotient. Quotient means how do you measure intelligence? He has a lot of I, but no Q, <laughs> I think. You see, can you imagine this? Now, for God, nothing surprised God. God was not surprised when Hamas attacked Israel. God was not surprised when there was a war in Ukraine. God was not surprised when all the things happening that's being exposed right now in our politics. It, God never said, oh, OMG. God never says that, right? 
He knows everything. And so God will never be shocked and say, Oh, something occurred to me. It never happens to the Lord. Now think about this. If the Holy Spirit has no IQ, and He knows everything, and He's God, and He lives inside of you. Do you know that somebody living inside of you who knows everything about everything and is committed himself to be a teacher to you and to lead you into all the... Do you know what that means? Do you know that as believers, we have access to the Holy Spirit who knows everything about everything and is committed to teach us and to lead us into all truth? Wow. I mean, we are really set up for success. See, the mind of God is with God because He is God. He's living inside of us. So what do you think about this? Have you ever asked the Lord, the Holy Spirit, uh, Holy Spirit, what do you think about my job? Have you asked God? Lord, Lord, what do you think about this business? Lord, what do you think about my relationship with this girl? Lord, what do you think about me as a father? What do you think about my career? Have you ever asked the Lord? Can you imagine? He knows everything about everything. So He is not a power you use. He is a person that you know. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. If you want to know God, you have to wait on Him and you have to wait God to tell you about Himself. God will reveal Himself to you if you are serious. And that is revelation. God through the Holy Spirit imparting revelation. So we ask the question, why? Why do we need to do this? And, uh, you know, the, do you know that Adam and Eve lived by revelation? The Word of God came through them, through the Spirit, through, not through the five senses, because God is His Spirit. God is His Spirit. So He communicated to Adam and Eve through the Spirit. When we are born again, if you are truly born again, our spirits are restored to the status of Adam. We can communicate with God through the Spirit. Our spirits are, are capable of incredible things. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You know, sometimes... I listen to how Christians, you know, reason. They say, Lord, give them a sound mind. They have absolutely no, no reasoning. So there's no limit. There's limit what we can do if we live by God's revelation. We're capable of receiving revelation the way Adam received revelation because the barriers are removed when we're born again. So why do we need it? Because number one, we are creatures of revelation. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 17, But who, he who joins himself to the Lord becomes spiritually one with him. Revelation is when God speaks to you. Okay, I read a scripture. I understand with your mind. And sometimes there's a big gap from your mind to your heart. You know, and you need to jump from your mind to your heart. And you still cannot understand it. I preached over and over and over again many times the same messages and the same passages. And people will come to me on the third or fourth time. Wow, this is the first time I understand that, Pastor. Wow, I never thought of that. You know why? Because when God speaks, He doesn't speak in English or Tagalog. Amen? Hallelujah. Don't judge me if I preach in English. You know when God speaks? He speaks to you in the language called light. He speaks light. How do you speak light? I remember in times we have a church, you know, and, uh, and we go through the service, one hour and a half, and some people get it, some people don't. Sometimes I don't get it. I go out on stage, I start to preach, then I get it on stage. Now I understand, Lord. You see, many of us are not really listening with our spirit. Amen? You're saying, okay, Pastor Jerome is preaching. He looks handsome today. I'm sorry to distract you with my looks, you know. But listen, listen. Al Hollingsworth puts it this way. God speaks in the now. What is now? Zero to five seconds. 
and you can miss it. He says zero to five seconds. That's where God speaks. And if it's been done six seconds, it's already in the past. He wants to speak you in the now. You cannot miss it. You can miss it if you're unconscious. Many of us are unconscious in church. You know, you, know, you see the reactions. You, you feel the air. You feel the atmosphere. But basically, we are unconscious. You know, in our old center, let me give this illustration. After our one-hour long worship in that small garage, when I started to speak, many people in our church would stand up and go to the bathroom. I said, why? Do I look like a toilet to you? <laughs> when, I stand up, I, this, when I stand up here, people will start to go to the bathroom. And then others don't do that. Others bring out their snacks <laughs> and pass it around. You know, they're so generous. Sometimes the snacks went to me on stage. Now listen, a lot of people are unconscious. And when you're unconscious, you miss God's revelation. What is God saying? Now, when you have God in your mind, hold Him there. When, you ha when you're thinking of God, hold Him there. That's why we worship first. So that we shift gears and our mind makes us focus. That's why we need to keep, our, our, keep God in our hearts. tuning in the Spirit. God speaks to us through revelation in that language is light you know uh, sometimes when I listen to conferences I hear a revelation from the Lord I write it down truth dot dot and I write it down you know why because we're creatures of revelation if we receive our receive light our spirits have enormous capability how could how come we still fail and get deceived and forget and this is where I put my whole emphasis this morning. Because we have not cultivated what I would call the five senses of our spirits. Spirit of wisdom and revelation. <clears throat> you know, the physical senses, we have, we're, we have five uh, you know, senses in the physical world. Our touch, our taste, our, our taste, our hearing, and our smelling. In the soul senses, we have intellect, emotion, volition, imagination, and memory. In the spiritual sense, we also have five. And I wanted to just show you this chart that I made and uh, Kes wonderfully improved. Five senses, body, soul, and spirit. And, you know, when a person is blind, do you know that his sense of hearing is increased? And his sense of smelling is increased because there's, he's missing one sense. Do you know when... <coughs> <clears throat> a chef <clears throat> can increase his sensitivity to taste so he can distinguish the taste, you know. I remember that Bonnie in, in Australia can distinguish the sound of bats, the different shape, the female bat and the male bat. I don't know what kind of an ear is that, you know. <laughs> but the same thing is with the soulish realm. You can increase your imagination, your emotion, and your intellect. You read a fiction book, imagination flourishes. Watch telenovelas, telenovelas, Korean telenovelas, especially you increase your emotional faculties. You know, talk to Koyasani when he was still alive, increase your intellect. But not too many of us, we are too physical, we're not very spiritual. You know, in 1 Corinthians 1, 6 verse 17 says, but he who is joined to the Lord is one with spirit with him. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Let me give you my interpretation of five spiritual senses to receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Number one, a fear of God. We have to have the fear of God. Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 1, again, verse 7, to have knowledge, you must first have reverence for the Lord, Stupid people have no respect for wisdom and refuse to learn. What is the fear of God? If you don't have fear of God, you will never have a spirit of wisdom and revelation. It's a deep desire of not offending God. A picture of the holiness of God. A deep respect and reverence for the power and the authority of God. I can't do this. I cannot disrespect Him. 
I will never be disrespectful to his power and his authority. That's the fear of God. And there's a story I mentioned here about a group of people who uh, Jesus visited in the city of Gerasenes. And there was a demon-possessed man who was, you know, cutting people and living in the, in the cemetery. And so when Jesus arrived, the demons all responded. They called themselves legion. When uh, Jesus, what is your name? I, our name is legion because we are thousands. We are many of them. Estimate the word legion is probably around 2,000. And so when Jesus rebuked them, the demons said, send us to the pigs. And the demons went all the way straight to the pigs. And the story goes, 2,000 pigs committed suicide. You know, ran to the river and drowned themselves. Now, I mean, hallelujah, what a miracle. But can you picture that? Imagine that uh, from the picture of the businessman who owns the pigs. I just lost 2,000 pigs. I lost my business, right? And so you know what happened? They wanted Jesus in the town to leave. Lord, we can't afford you here. You're too expensive. Leave. So can you imagine that? Just, just that thought. They don't fear God. They fear bankruptcy. They fear the loss of money. They don't have respect for the power of God. God just delivered a demon-possessed man who was cutting people in the tombs. They would rather have him than have Jesus in their city. That is terrible. Terrible. Now, I, we are praying for revival in the convergence. Revival is simply restoration of the fear of God. A high sensitivity and desire not to offend the holy God of the universe. It's interesting. When Christians don't have the fear of God, they just commit all kinds of compromise and reckless sin. Oh, Lord won't mind. Oh, anyway, I have grace. But have you ever thought of having respect for God? You know, revival is stark and absolute, uncovering the nature of man and revealing the glory of God. Fear of God. Have you ever cultivated the fear of God in your life? Do you lack the fear of God in your dealings with your life? Do you just go about your your life as if nothing, God is not there. I don't care. I watch this movie. It's a terrible movie, but I can just watch it. Do we not? Do we tolerate more demon-possessed people rather than the presence of Jesus? I mean, that's a terrible indictment. But it's a lack of the fear of God. Cultivate the fear of God. Number two, cultivate our faith. Faith in Hebrews 1, 11 verse 6 Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Faith is used to please God. Romans 1, 17, the just shall live by faith. Faith is used to live your life. In, in 2 Corinthians 8, verse 17, we will abound in everything in faith. Everything. We will abound in everything in faith. And then in Luke 17, verse 5, the apostle said, Lord, increase our faith. Do you know that faith is the currency of heaven? If you don't have faith, you cannot buy anything in heaven. The only way to get things from heaven is to have faith. If you don't have faith, you cannot buy it. You, know, you cannot go to America without your dollars. You cannot go to Europe without your euros. You cannot, you cannot go to other countries without your ringgit or whatever. Change your currency. In the same way, if you want God to do things in your life, only way to receive it is by faith. Have you cultivated your faith? Number three, our hope. Hope is not wishful thinking. It says in Hebrews 6, 18 to 20, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have is an anchor of our soul, both sure and steadfast. Now, it's, you know, I cannot go into the detail. I preached about this several times, but it speaks of a hope that you can be proud of. That's why 1 Peter 3.15 says, But have reverence for Christ in your hearts and honor Him as Lord. Be ready at all times to answer anyone who asks of you 
to explain the hope you have in you. It's there. You don't have to explain your faith. You have to explain your hope that you have in you. Are you too negative that the hope can't be seen in you? Is it an extraordinary hope or everybody else have the same hope? Because nobody asks us, hey, what kind of a hope you have? You know, we just had a terrible tragedy and you still you're full of hope. You know, no wonder, no one wonders about our hope because we don't men- demonstrate the way, the way it should. I think it's important for us to have this hope. Now, I understand Peter wrote this in Second Peter. When he says we have this hope that should be asked. Oh, Peter, you don't, you're not living in the 21st century. Well, Peter lived in the Roman Empire where the, where the oppression is maximum when they can't live and practice their Christianity outside. And yet, he's so filled with hope. Now, think about that. Hope is killed by negative, neg- negativism and complaining and a murmuring spirit. Can we do this? Can we have a memorandum right now? Just a, you know, can we just make a statement right now? Can you not complain for just one week? Can we do that? Can we not be negative just for a week? Try it. You'll feel better. Can you try expressing your hope just for a week? You're cultivating your sensitive in the spirit. Hope is very rare nowadays, but the Bible says we have unshakable hope. Express it. Express it. Exercise it. Live your hope in the open. Number four is where all we always to do is our worship. We take a long time to define. You know, I, I won't do that anymore. But now remember when Solomon was asked, ask anything. God says, ask anything. Solomon, you're, you know, you're, you're taking over King David's throne. What did Solomon ask? Wisdom, right? He asked for wisdom. But actually, that's not the only thing. Wisdom that lies beneath this statement. Listen to what, what Solomon asked. Now, O Lord, he says, you have made your servant, which is servant king, which is David, instead of my father, but I am still a little child. I don't know how to go out or come in. Now, remember, I preached a message about this, going out and coming in. I mean... Solomon has all the wisdom, but he doesn't know to go out or to come in. Moses says, I'm retiring because I am tired of going out and coming in. And then Caleb says, if I'm going to get this new territory, I am going to exercise my going out and my coming in. It's actually they came in for worship, then they went out for war. It's a war statement. It's a strategy for war, going out and coming in. How do you go out? You come in first in worship. And that's how David exercised it. And Solomon says, I need to understand that. I need to know that. Or I can't be a good king. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. This is where worship is connected with wisdom and revelation. You know, one of the best things that can steer your spirit up is worship. Standing before the throne. Worship is both an act a lifestyle in a sense. I don't know if you ever noticed that. I sense the worship atmosphere. I exercise the act of worship. I live a life of worship. And I increase my sense of worship. You know, Lord, I don't understand what's happening. I need to spend time worship. Lord, I have this question I cannot answer. I have this decision I have to make. I'm facing these issues in my life. You need to spend time in worship. You need to have the sense of worship. Do you cultivate that? And finally, the number five is intercession. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. I never thought that when you intercede, you're actually stirring up your spirit of wisdom and revelation. Philippians 4, verse 6, 8. Don't worry about anything, but in all your prayers, ask God for what you need, always asking Him with a thankful heart. And God's peace will be with you. Romans 8, 26 to 27 reveals it more. Likewise, the Spirit also helps up in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we ought to pray for as we thought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. What is He talking about? 
groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Are there times in your life, I don't know how to pray. I'm just, I'm just at a loss, Lord. I'm, this is a dead end. I don't know how to pray. Well, you need to exercise your, your intercessory gift. That's part of your spirit. Get in touch with the heart of God. You know, I always try to understand when you start to receive the burdens of God, you start to exercise it, and suddenly things start to change in your life, and then you can pray and intercede, and you receive a spirit of wisdom and revelation. I'll give you one last example before we close. It's a sample of David that we have preached over and over a hundred times in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 1 to 3. We realize when we examine David facing Goliath, it was the, the battle was won before it began. David was already winning before it started. Now, Goliath was approximately nine foot high. His shield is close to about 10 feet. His sword is like seven feet long. And we understand that David cannot, cannot fight this giant. Absolutely not. And then Goliath started to challenge the Israelites every morning for 40 days. There's a significance why 40 days. He challenged them morning and evening. That's 40 days. That's 80 times. Brainstormed and scared all the Israelites. Even Solomon who stood above all the armies of Israel. You remember Solomon was the tallest person in Israel. And then we all saw what happened. And David in verse 26 in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Listen to what happened. Then David spoke to the men who stood by saying, What shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine and takes away the approach for Israel? That's asking the question, why? See, David was wise. For who is, he, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that we should defy the armies of the living God? Now, if I say that in Tagalog, it's too, it's too green. So I won't say that in Tagalog. Anyway, if you know the story, here's what, uh, what David says to, it, to, King Solomon, uh, to King Saul. I fought the lions and the bears. I took them by the, I took them by the neck. I attack them, I rescue the lambs. And the lion, but the bear turns on me, I grab it by the throat and beat it to death. I have killed lions and bears, I will do the same to this heathen Philistine. That's, you can find out in First Samuel 17, uh, 34, 37. But you know, I ask myself, where is the sling there? There was no sling. Do you know David never mentioned the sling? You know, a lot of people say, well, he must be very good in doing the sling. He practiced with the lions and the bears. He never used the sling against the lions and the bears. So what happened when he fought Goliath? Now listen carefully. Now this, this is exciting for me. Are you excited? If you're not excited, then you're too cold. <laughs> okay, let me read it to you. I want you to see, I want you to demonstrate the five uh, senses of the, whole, of, of the Spirit. David answered to Goliath, You're coming against me with a sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in, against in the name of the Lord Almighty God, the God of Israel, Amherst, whom you have defied. He's exercising the fear of God. Right? Don't you, aren't you scared? He's exercising the fear of God. This very day, the power, the Lord, that the Lord will put you in my power. I will defeat you and cut your head off. And I will give the bodies of the Philistine soldiers to the birds and animals to eat. That's faith and intercession. He's exercising his faith. How can I do that? I've never used a sling before in my life. And he's interceding, making a declaration. Then listen, listen to this. Then the whole world will know that Israel... Has a God. That's hope. Demonstrate it. Right? Demonstrating to this Israel who was so full of fear. Come on, we're going to defeat this guy. And here is the revelation. Everyone here will see to that the Lord does not need swords or spears to save his people. That's a revelation. That's a truth. And then David closes it with worship. He is victorious in battle and he will put all of you in our power. That's worship.
Can you imagine five exercises in one statement? Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Why did this Philistines fled when Goliath was killed? They all had weapons because they lost spiritual authority. Why do you think David had five smooth stones? I said to myself, well, you know, it's not a random thing to fight, pick up five smooth stones. That give you my interpretation. The fear of God, faith, hope, worship, and intercession. Five smooth stones. Amen? Absolutely. He has the spirit of wisdom and revelation, and he defeated Goliath with that revelation. Listen, when you exercise all of these five, you have to have always based it according to what the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. It's not in, in the script, but I added it. All scripture is breathed by God and profitable for revelation, for teaching. That's why we need to have the word of God. Amen? Amen. Well, I'm going to close with this demonstration. I'm going to ask help from somebody here. Yes, okay. I hope everybody, everybody can see it. Maybe you could put it on this side. Okay, so everybody can see it. There we go. Okay, thank you. Okay, now. Okay. This is you, okay? Come on, we're on time. Okay. That's you. Now, if I wanted a chocolate drink. I pour it in there, right? Now I have a chocolate drink, right? Is this chocolate drink? And about milk too. If you want to have chocolate drink, you have to steer it, okay? If you don't steer it, you won't have the drink, right? Yes. Now listen, we are the milk. The Holy Spirit is the chocolate. We need to spear, steer the spirit. Amen? If you don't steer, you won't have the drink. Amen? Let's give Lord a clap offering. I want us just to cultivate the senses we have today. Let's all stand up. We're going to worship the Lord. And in a very simple cry in our hearts. I mean, can you face all the Goliaths in your life? Yes, you can. God has provided for everything that you need. It's complete. It's all ready. It's all we need to have is a spirit of wisdom and revelation. So our eyes will be open. And so when our eyes are open, then we can make declaration. We can do what we need to do. But we have to stir up. The spirit within us you know and uh, we're going to spend like maybe five minutes asking for the Holy Spirit to come and uh, let me run it down to you do you still have the fear of God in your life do you have a deep respect for his authority and his power do you have the fear of God in your life because if you don't have the fear of God, it's not going to work. Spirit won't reveal things to you. But if you have God's fear in you, if you understand that compromise is sin, if you understand that I love God and I hate sin, if you understand that, Lord, why would I do this wicked thing and sin against you? Because I have the fear of God then it will make a big difference.
your worship, your intercession, your hope, and your faith will be different. So I want us to just close our eyes. If you have God in your mind, hold God just for five seconds. Hold Him in your mind and say, God, our Father, hallowed be Thy name. Hallowed be Thy name. I respect you. I honor you. Right now, fear of God. It's not to be afraid. It's to respect and honor and and revere. Fear of God. Then let's exercise our faith. Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. Increase our faith, Lord. Make it a prayer. What you're facing is so difficult, so, so, so hard. So God, increase our faith. Increase it, Lord. Come on, make it a prayer. The apostles prayed it. You can pray it as well. So we can live. We can move in you. Now anchor your life on hope. Believe God, Lord. I have this hope in me. Nothing can happen in this world that can really affect me because I am an anchor. My anchor is in I have hope in you. Help me exercise it, demonstrate it, use it. Next is our time of intercession. Can you now pray and start to believe God? Can you pray? Have you ever interceded? Have you prayed? You know, have you... Have you said, Lord, I stand in behalf of my issues in life right now where two or three are gathered together in my name. There you are in our midst to solve the issue. Whatever you ask in my name, says the Lord, it shall be done by my Father who is in heaven. Intercede right now. Ask for it. Ask for it. Hallelujah, Jesus. And now, we're going to close it with worship. We're going to uh, you know, worship is more than just singing. Worship is body, soul, and spirit and crying out to God, Lord, I am all yours. I belong to you. So can I invite you, brothers, this is not to perform any liturgy. Can I invite you to really worship right now? Worship the Lord. Worship. Don't wait for the song. Worship Him. Say, God, you are good. You are good. You are good. You are holy. Worship with your hands, worship with your mouth, worship with your heart, worship with your emotions, worship with your spirit, worship with your body, soul, and spirit. Worship. He deserves it, and we need to. He deserves it, and we need to. Come on. Guys, you can do better than that. He is a holy God. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our glory. The rocks would shout out and cry out worship, but we are better than rocks. We are better than rocks. We are children, sons, and daughters of God. Come on, I invite you, even for the first time, worship Him. Worship Him. Spirit. Come and fill us, Holy Spirit. Move in our midst, Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid of silence. Just ask, Holy Spirit, come. Move in our midst right now. Spirit of wisdom and revelation counsel and might come come Lord come Jesus come Lord Father I just want to declare for each and every one that is here that you prayer of the Apostle Paul 
that you give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation to open the eyes of our understanding. Give us a spirit of revelation, wisdom and revelation to make us understand the greatness of the power that you've given us, the hope that you've provided for us, and everything, Lord, that you've desired from design from the very beginning in our lives so we may see, so we may see, and therefore live. I pray in the name of Jesus, open our eyes. Let that spirit come. If you just want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, just raise up your hands to the Lord, and I just want to release it. Lord, refill each and every one of your, your spirit. Fill us, Lord, right now with your Holy Spirit. Let everyone be filled with the Holy Spirit. Just like in the book of Acts, everyone, Lord, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Everyone, Lord, would sense the awe of worship, would sense the fear of God, would sense their hope, their faith, and, Lord, would practice that intercessory gift. Everyone, right now, Lord, release your spirit to each and every one. Stretch your hands from heaven and touch every hand and every heart and every mind. We receive it, Lord. To say it in your heart, we receive it, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a mighty clap offering. And shout unto God, Amen.